So this star above the telescope is actually the planet Saturn. And tonight we're gonna to capture high resolution imagery of the planet, but we're going to do that live at the telescope, live from the camera. Now what I'm gonna do is show you the setup that I use. I'm gonna show you the settings that I use in the software. So feel free to adapt that to your own observing conditions and your own setup. And of course you can use this for other planets in the solar system. Tonight we're gonna to focus on Saturn. I've also been getting up to capture Jupiter in the morning sky, and I'll show you the settings I've been using for Jupiter as well. So before we start observing, it's worth explaining how planetary imaging works. Now our friends who capture images of deep sky targets, they're gonna use long exposures. They wanna bring out as much faint detail, these really low surface brightness objects. So by contrast, planets are relatively bright. We can easily see them with the naked eye. But because they're on the far side of the solar system, we're going to need a long focal length. We need a long focal length to be able to, one, resolve their disk, and two, to be able to resolve features on the planetary surfaces. Now, because we're using a high magnification, because we're using a long focal length, that means any turbulence in the Earth's atmosphere, any bad seeing, is going to disrupt the image. So what we're going to do is use a high-speed camera. We're going to use a fast video rate that's going to capture thousands of images over a couple of minutes, any more than that, and the planet's own rotation is going to blur the image. We're then going to pass that through the software. That's going to reject the frames that have been blurred by the atmosphere. We're only going to keep the sharp ones, the clear ones. We can stack those one on top of the other and then process that to bring out all these planetary details. Now, when I started planetary imaging a few years ago, and in fact made my first few YouTube videos about planetary imaging, you used one program to capture the video files, you used another to sort and stack them, you used another to sharpen them. And I've become a real fan of using SharpCap. Not only can we use this for live stacking deep sky objects, using the power of the camera to reveal all these wonderfully faint targets, we can also use it to capture live views of planetary surfaces. So we're gonna do this live at the telescope. I don't have to come down in the morning. We don't have to come down in the morning and then process all these video files we captured the evening before. We can actually do it live at the telescope. So you get the wonderful joy of being under the night sky, being able to enjoy observing, but you get to use the power of the camera, power of the digital software as well. Now, SharpCap, alas, does not sponsor me, so I've had to buy my own copy. I've had to buy my own license for SharpCap. It is the princely sum of £14 a year, and in my opinion, it's well worth it. So this video is split into chapters. I'm gonna show you the setup I'm using. We'll capture some imagery of Saturn, and then I'll show you the settings and the techniques I use for Jupiter as well. Now, before we jump back to Saturn, there's one important setting you need in SharpCap, and that's to capture in WinDupos format and to capture in universal time. So open up SharpCaps, go to settings, go to the file name settings, and then tick universal time and WinDupos format. And this means you don't have to worry about time zones, you don't have to worry about daylight saving time, you're always capturing in universal time. Right, so let's go back to Namibia and capture Saturn. There it comes. So I'm just gonna get the focus, trying to get the focus as best I can. And I'm just doing this by, I haven't put a focusing mask on. Oh, there's a moon right alongside it. Oh, look at that. I'm just using the shadow that the rings are casting on the planet, just using that black band. Try and check I've got the best focus I can. So while we're just letting the image build up, it's worth explaining what image, what equipment we're using to capture this image. So this is an 11 inch telescope. The mirror is 11 inches in diameter. And I put a times two Barlow in or a times two power mate. That means I'm actually shooting at 5.6 meters. So it's 5,600 millimeters focal length. And I've got a color camera, a high speed color camera, high speed planetary camera at the back. And that's what we're using to capture those high speed data files. So just before we start doing our capture, so I'm just doing a few things on the setting. The first thing I did, I've turned off my dark. So I did have that active. Uh, from when I've been doing some live stacking, I've turned that off, we've got no darks. I've also just played around and checked the histogram, we're a smidge above 50%, around about two thirds. I could probably go a little bit more, but I always prefer to slightly undershoot than overshoot. And looking on the screen, that doesn't look too unpleasant. So we're around about two thirds of the histogram. And I'm shooting at 40 frames a second, so that's 25 milliseconds. The gain's at 415, so that's not looking too bad. I'm just going to check the focus, although that's looking pretty good. 
And again, I'm just looking at the shadow band there. That's looking quite smart, isn't it? So I prefer using a motorized focus. It's so much easier. Right, so that's all done. Next thing I've got to do is reduce the file size down, the region of interest. 640 by 480. There we go. Center. I'm telling Sharpcat now to automatically center that field of view. Right, let's go and get some high resolution shots. So what we're going to do is go tools, live stack. So what I want to do is capture 2000 start frames and I can simply do auto sharpen and straight away that's bringing out the details. Look at that. And you can also do auto adjust brightness and color. So when I started doing planetary imaging several years ago, of course, you have to record your captures, record your data, come down in the morning, process them all up. But what I love about SharpCap is I can actually see that live, live on the screen. And look at that. We've got the, the shadow of the rings on the planet. We've got the storm belts. We've even got that moon as well, just alongside the rings. And we're seeing that live on the screen. And as that stack builds up, as that file size builds up, you know, we're actually seeing it live on the screen. We're not doing any post-processing. We're not doing anything. The laptop is doing it live. And here I am sitting here with my mug of tea and I'm getting to be enjoying under the night skies, but getting to see this on the, on the screen, you know, live, not having to process this in the morning. That is stunning, isn't it? Now, the other thing I like to do as well is do a time lapse. So let's do every two minutes, we will record a TIFF image. I've added the timestamp so I know the time and its time is set from the laptop. And if you remember, I always set it to WinDupos time settings at universal time. And I'm also going to save a raw frame so it's an unprocessed, unsharpened as well. And then start the time lapse. So that's our sharpening. I've just left those at the defaults. That's our frame filtering. So I've told it to only stack the best 30%, the best few frames. And it's counting that over the 100. So you can see how many, you know, we're rejecting 70% of the frames. We're not good enough. I'm going to keep that as a live stack. I've set the time lapse. So we're going to record that. So we'll be able to see that moon moving over time. That's the stabilization mode. We're doing it on the planet. I can just sit here, I'm under this warm African skies, I'm under these dark Namibian skies, well, dark if there wasn't a moon over there. I just enjoy this beautiful view of Saturn build up on the laptop screen. And it's so simple. All I have to do is do auto adjust the brightness and color and auto sharpen. Well, now that's images built up a bit more. Let's try auto sharpen a bit more. Probably have to add a bit of denoise to this one. That is stunning, isn't it? And so without having to do all that post process, I can get to see it live on the screen. I'm so impressed with that. That is stunning. Let's have a look at the expert mode. So I'm not too sure what the difference is between the expert mode and the ordinary mode, but they both seem to just by hitting the auto sharpen and just adjusting that denoise seem to give roughly the same results. Now, the other thing I have to be careful of is that because the telescope doesn't track perfectly well, I think it's perfectly fine for visual use. But when we're at F20, we're really pushing the magnification. Of course, it's not tracking perfectly. That Saturn will slowly wander out of the field of view. So I've got to keep an eye and make sure that the red square doesn't go outside of the gray square. I might have to manually nudge that back into line later on. What we're going to do now, I'm just going to check the files that have been saved and just show you how that time lapse builds up. So that's the time lapse that's starting at 1901. There we are. There's the first one. And then those are the blurry ones if I want to come back and do those, sharpen those myself. Isn't that stunning? Oh, that's really made my evening. What an exciting, exciting imaging. And again, I'm not doing any effort. I've just pressed auto sharpen, auto colors, 
and just let the software do the work. What the software is then doing is then looking at those, those raw images, those raw frames as they come through. It's then rejecting all those blurry frames, all those that have been blurred by the atmosphere. And it's then just stacking the good ones, stacking those one on top of the other. And of course, as that stack size builds up, all the noise averages out. And that means we've got, then got a higher signal to noise ratio that we can then sharpen. And that means we can capture things like the shadow that the rings are casting onto the globe. We've got the storm belts, you know, the storm surfaces, the atmospheric bands on Saturn itself. We've also got that, got the moon as well. And that's the cool thing. You can actually adjust your sliders in real time and actually see that image, see that image build up. Isn't that simply stunning? Look at that, right. I'm just going to look up in Sky Safari which moon this is. Oh, that's Titan. Now, I wonder, it says Dione and Hyperion are also in the field of view. Although much fainter. So here is a stacked and sharpened image of Saturn. Now, if I stretch the image further, not only do we have Titan in the field of view, the bright moon Titan, we also have right alongside the rings, the moon Dio. Now, this is 10, this is magnitude 10. So that's five times fainter than Titan. And if we look to the far side of the rings, we have really faint Mimas and Enceladus. Now these are both magnitude 13 and magnitude 12 respectively. So they're a hundred times fainter than Titan, almost in the noise floor, almost lost against the background sky. So not only do we have beautiful Saturn in the field of view, the brilliant moon Titan, we actually have three other moons as well, hidden in the data that is there in the signal. And we just have to stretch the image to bring them out. And I'll probably have even more if I hadn't shrunk the capture area down as well. So we've got five solar system objects all in the same field of view. So with Saturn done then, let's turn our attention to Jupiter in the morning sky. Now I recorded this back home in my garden observatory. That's my backyard observatory for those of you in North America. So same telescope, this is a Celestron C11. I've got a different mount. I've got a Skywatcher out azimuth mount. So same telescope, different mount. And but basically the workflow is going to be the same. Now, I really love Jupiter, as unlike Saturn, there's so much details in the storm belts. Plus, of course, you've got these really bright moons, the Galilean moons. There's four really bright moons that we can see, and they're always doing something interesting over Jupiter. There's always something happening. And on this morning, we had two shadow transits. So both outermost moon Callisto was casting its shadow onto Jupiter, and then the innermost moon Io was also casting its shadow on. So we had two shadow transits, plus, of course, Io then transited across the surface as well. So it is well worth getting up to capture this, a double shadow transit and Io then transiting as well. And using these same techniques, using the same workflow, I've managed to record this, you know, in the morning sky. So as before, I'm checking the focus, getting that as sharp as I can. I'm not using a focusing mask, just doing that by eye. I'm looking at those black shadows, getting them as crisp as I can. And Jupiter is so much brighter than Saturn that I've actually reduced the exposures down to 12 milliseconds and again reduced the gain down to 350. So I've got much faster captures and much reduced gain. And I've reduced the capture area down, hit the planet shortcut button and as before hit auto sharpened. And because I've reduced the gain I'm trying a stack of 1000 frames and this seems to work a lot better with a brighter Jupiter. So by reducing the gain, you can therefore reduce the stack size. Now, what is interesting as that stack size builds up, as the signal strength builds up, you can then hit auto sharpen again and actually it allows you a little bit more sharpening as well. Now, these are the settings I used. I actually boosted up a little bit of the fine detail. I've boosted up the saturation and I've slid the denoise all the way across as well. And that seems to work very well with my setup. So I actually also took a larger capture area and I captured the three other moons that we can easily see around Jupiter as well. So we've got three moons, plus, of course, we've got Io in front of Jupiter, plus the two shadows as well. So I think that's really quite a nice picture. I might have to get that printed and get that put up on the wall behind me. Now, since I recorded this, SharkCap has just released uh, an updated version and in the planetary live stacking feature, it's got a getting started section. So it's got some suggested defaults, some suggested defaults depending on the object you're shooting, how big the moon, sorry, how big the planet appears in your field of view. So have a look at those defaults, those uh, suggested settings, and have a look at the settings that I've used and feel free to adapt those to your own setup and your own observing conditions. 
And as always, my thanks to the Patreons. Thank you for your continued support. And in the meantime, I'll wish you clear and steady skies. <laughs>